So this pour was the first one that I did. And I did it on a blank. So it was a rectangular blank. And then I cut out the shape. And I think this method works really well because when I did the same pour on the Jazz Master, there are a lot of curves, uh, specifically the arm contour, where gravity's really pulling all the paint down, and there's a round over on all the edges where the paint is also being pulled by gravity. So all of these interesting cells that occur get lost because the paint is spreading. The swirls really look like almost like the storms of Jupiter. This part here in particular came out really gorgeous. Obviously when I'm mixing colors, I'm mixing a color with white, then a color with white. So you get the colors embedded in the whites and they look really good. Otherwise, if you choose like a color and another color together, they'll just mix and turn into basically mud. So you always want to separate your colors and at least know your color theory so that when you're combining the colors, before you're poor, you're putting them in an order that makes sense so that when they do mix, they're mixing into something pleasant. So for example, this section here has um, red and white, and when that mix, it made a pink. So that's a pleasant color. And so the other thing that I wanted to do was try an epoxy coat. And because this was the first test, I didn't use enough epoxy, and obviously my bench isn't level, so there's thicker amounts of epoxy here than up here towards the horns. So the thickness here is what I was going for. I wanted something that was like a top, like a quarter inch top. So the only thing you need to do here is simply just buff it out so it's clear. So due to the fact that my bench isn't level, it came out much thinner here. So the epoxy is very, very thin there. So this is the top pour. And this top pour came out better than every other pour. This was the third one I did. But all of these just amazing cells came out, and this is just a beautiful, beautiful top. It's a shame that the epoxy came out really poor. You have to deal with air bubbles with epoxy, and all these air bubbles came to the surface. Because, you know, I'm just setting it overnight, so I guess overnight they came to the surface and popped. So there's these little craters here in the finish, which is really sad. So I think I'm really onto something with this type of paint job because it's unlike anything you can do with stain. You, you can't do stain like this. You can't make cells like this with stain. It's simply the nature of the relationship between the pigment and the silicone, which creates this interesting pattern and it's all chaos. And that's the other thing that's really beautiful about this is that although there is some, some human touch to it, I'm moving the paint for the most part this is just all pure chaos. So today we're going to be doing an acrylic pour on this body blank. It is a walnut body with an 11 millimeter maple top. And so what's going to happen with this blank is that we're going to put the pour all over here and then we're going to cut our Telecaster shape out of it. And what's going to happen is the edge of this maple is going to be clean maple and hopefully flamed. So it'll add a really nice touch of that kind of flamed binding. It's gonna really contrast the colorful top and the dark walnut. So let's get started. So you have to protect your bench from all the pour over. And so I'm just using this plastic, I don't know what it is, plastic sheet. And I've used this a couple of times, so I'm just going to put this here. So I'm not going to worry about visualizing the shape. I could easily maybe draw an outline of the Telecaster on this blank, but I'm not going to do that. The best part of an acrylic pour is how random it is and how chaotic it is. There's a fair amount of serendipity involved that we want to take advantage of, so I don't want to know where the shape is. We're just not going to bother with that. Cheap plastic cups from the corner store. You're going to need as many as the colors you choose, plus one for the actual pour. We're gonna need a lot of white, a lot of white. You're gonna need a pouring medium. This is Floetrol latex paste. It says eliminates brush and roller marks, improves flow and leveling. Our paint. So here we're going to choose our colors. 
I kind of feel that as long as you know your color theory, it doesn't matter what colors you choose, it's the order and the placement of the colors that matters. Yeah, these are our colors. One, two, three, four, five. That's what we're using. So let's do this. So these particular paints say they are pour ready, so they are already in a very liquid state. And that is actually really flowy already. I like that. You're also having to visualize the volume you're going to need for the surface area. So if I'm having five colors, how much or how little do I need to cover the whole thing? Okay, so I'm going to use about that much. And the other thing we want to look at is consistency. So this is a great consistency already. It's very soupy. That's what you want. You don't want it to be thick. That's great. So what I'm going to do is just really put a tiny bit of pouring medium in here. I mean, just a little bit. So here it goes. You can see what I'm talking about. Just to make it a little bit more soupy, but I like that a lot. All right, I want to try out this copper color. Metallic copper. Oh yeah. Okay, now look at this. This is not soupy at all. This is a little bit thicker. Let's take a look. That right there is not even dripping off the stirring stick. So we want a lot more of the pouring medium in here. I want it to be soupy. So I don't know, two, three spoonfuls. And I'm still not really dripping the way I want to drip. So I'm gonna add more. This is our color base here. So the next thing we want to do is add the silicone. This is what came with the kit. And I don't know, I've never used any other ones, so I don't have anything to compare it to. And I've heard people say, just put a drop in or a drop or two. I'm going to put a whole bunch in, like a whole bunch. And I'll start with the color you can actually see. We'll start with the salmon. And that is how much I put in. Squeeze for like, I don't know, three seconds. And then just stir it all together till it's all mixed up. All right, so let's put the base layer on. And I'm just gonna tilt the blank. So obviously we're not using a brush. You could use a palette knife, I guess. And I'm just letting gravity pull it and thin it out. Remember, I am only concerned with essentially the center of the blank, because that's where the guitar will be. This is just, you know, the excess wood. So that wasn't enough. I'm gonna just kind of go and put the whole cup in, which is pretty much what I suspected. And I'm going to make sure it covers the blank. And now let's mix up our dirty pour. So just a little bit of white, light blue. I'm gonna hit it with the orange, white. So I'm separating like the copper from everything else with, with a little bit of white. And then we'll do the blue. All right, so now we're gonna have to do the dirty pour thing. So we're gonna turn the blank over and then put the cup on and then do the flip, etc. All right. Already we're getting some pretty cool cell action there. So I'm going to just kind of do a semicircle, I think. It looks great. It looks fabulous. We've got a ton of cells here. And I love this color scheme with the orange and then that vibrant uh, purple or neon purple. So let's just go ahead and start moving this around. All right, so I'm just going to spread this. So this is really interesting. I mean, look at this. That's really interesting. I adjusted the lighting so you can see this better. And I did a second pour on top of the first because the first one just didn't have enough cells. And then this one does. It has pretty amazing cells. 
and I've just kind of focused it on the center. And the more you kind of tilt and push, the more it smears together. This is way, way too much paint. So I'm going to tilt this until I get the majority of all that thick paint off, okay? And then, I mean, look at that. That just looks killer. And all look at these cells, they're coming out. So let's hit it with the heat gun. See if we can make some more come out. All right, check that out. There is some amazing cells happening here. The light blue over the red looks killer. Then you have blue over the white and pink here. And then all this is on top. Just kind of swirled and smeared up there. This one came out pretty decent. And again, I, I could just tilt this blank till all the paint drips off and then just do another pour. You don't have to scrape or sand or anything. That's the, kind of the beauty of this. The, the first pour that turned out bad ends up being just the base layer. It doesn't have to be white. We have all these cells just blowing up in this corner here. Beautiful ones here in the blue. And then we have a couple of them popping up here. And I love the smear, the smeary thing up there. Now here's the deal. I used a lot of silicone. And I'm wondering if because I used a ton of silicone, I'm getting smaller cells, like lots of tiny ones. And if I'd used less silicone, if I would have gotten fewer bigger ones so that's another test i need to do here had a lot of that copper the metallic copper and look how it mixes with the white so that's a good color combo to remember for next time but more impressive is when the copper mixes with the red there that's a great color combo and then look at these cells here man and then look at these here look at the cells here it's blue cells, with just a tiny bit of speckle of white in them, breaking through the red. And then you have more cells there. This is just gorgeous. You have the red just kind of growing out of that left corner, bleeding into sort of the sky. So it's like you have this lava bubbling up into the heavens. Cells just kind of grow out of that corner. Look at all that chaos. Thanks for watching and take it easy.